First off, uh, I want to thank the grace of heaven and the virtues of the masters, the uh, mercy of the grand predecessor, predecessors, uh, transmitting masters, and everyone here today to uh, have this op brief opportunity to talk a little bit about this. It's a story of karma. Um, Rubao, immortal child, or Rubao Shentong. Um, Rubao, yeah, you can say it's precious, so precious immortal child, okay? And you'll, you'll, I guess, understand why he has that title uh, later on. All right. Okay, so this is the, the boy that we're talking about. It's, it's obviously, it's a true story, um, and it's happened very, in a very recent, uh, I guess, in, w w within the last, um, see, 30, 30, 30, 30 to 40 years. Okay. All right. So, um, this is their, the family, uh, we're talking about now. It's, it's the boy here, the, the little boy being held. Uh, by the parent, uh, the father. <clears throat> uh, so um, they, uh, they they were in Taiwan, and uh, they, you know, when when, when they uh, decided to move to New York, uh, except that um, they were going to move to New York uh, without the the little boy. Okay, so uh, his name is Zi uh, Xiong. Okay, so um, and the reason why is the mother kind of decided well. No, she's she has to work, in New York, and it would be kind of hard to take care of a little child, uh, you know. She, you know, while she's working, so she left um, their young son with their uh, his grandmother, okay, in Taiwan to uh, to be taken care of, okay. Um, all right, so <clears throat> so he's born. So yeah, he was born in 1984, okay. So February 13, um, he had a kind of a obstructed birth. I mean, it wasn't. It uh, wasn't an easy birth, um, and they discovered that, you know, when he was born, you know, he had this umbilical cord was kind of wrapped around his neck. I mean, it wasn't choking him, but, <coughs> uh, and he had to be born by, you know, a cesarean section. Uh, there's a saying, uh, or is a belief that, you know, <laughs> children who, babies who are born with, uh, like, the umbilical around the, the neck uh, kind of symbolize or indicates that, you know, they were perhaps cultivators in a previous life. You know, it's like the monks with the, the beads around their neck. Okay. But anyways, uh, so the parents and the older brother, <laughs> they left for New York in August, July, August 85, um, and left with the maternal grandmother. All right. Um, let's see. Oops. Okay. Uh, okay, so... Um, later on, then the grandmother tried to also get a visa for herself and to Xiong to in, in 1988. So this is uh, four years later to to go to New York as well. <coughs> uh, but that was there, you know, it was unsuccessful. They couldn't get the visa. Um, now um, I think it was a, an aunt or, um, or or I think maybe the sister of the the, the mother. Uh, she went to a fortune teller, and uh, this is what the fortune teller, or, or sorry, the, the grandmother uh, went to the fortune teller later after that, <coughs> and uh, this is what the fortune teller says, says, you know, the child has a strong, noble aura. It is better for him to not live with his parents before he's five years old. If he does, someone in the family will die, or else he will live like a beggar for the rest of his life. Um, this is very interesting. It turns out it's uh, to be true, actually, it will be true. Okay, so, uh, uh, anyways, <coughs> so, um, the, you know, the, the rest of the family, they're in New York, and, uh, but, and they had a friend in New York who came back to Taiwan, uh, decided to make a video of, uh, Zishong, um, and to bring it back to New York to show the, the family, you know, the parents. Uh, and so they saw it, and they thought it was a good idea to send a video of themselves back. That's Taiwan for you know for the uh, their their, their son, son to see. <coughs> now, unfortunately, when uh, he saw the video, he started crying hysterically, uh, and they, you know, he he was he basically longed to be with his parents, okay, with his family, uh, and you know, so he ended up, you know, he, he didn't have an appetite, he couldn't eat, uh, he had headaches and and other uh, problems. Um, and so the grandmother called, um, uh, you know, Zichon's mother to, to say, you know, to tell her that, you know, she kind of blamed her, say, wait a minute, you know, you shouldn't have done that because you violated what the fortune teller said, right? To not, um, 
to not basically not let him the, the son see them okay before he was five years old okay so at that time he was only four years old <coughs> um, and so uh, but you know because of I don't know what he, he just the boys are acting very strangely um, and uh, you know the grandmother thought that <coughs> excuse me he was kind of possessed by some e evil spirits so she sought out you know these uh, kind of spirit healer to, to do some kind of something like an exorcism or something like that right uh, but that that didn't work okay so um, but anyways the boy just really wanted to be with his uh, parents uh, in New York okay so now even the doctor you know couldn't you know really find anything that was medically wrong with the boy okay <clears throat> okay so but later on though he was um, diagnosed with having you know basically tumors in his brain uh, and he needed immediate surgery and <clears throat> the, the the problem was the, to get the surgery they needed uh, the consent of uh, one of the parents so the one of the parents had to sign in person okay so one of the parents had to come back uh, to Taiwan that. and so the mother uh, you know, as soon as she heard this, immediately tried to get a visa, and and you know she pleaded <laughs> with the in the consulate uh, to to be able to get the visa, and she finally was able to get it right away. And so the next day she flew back to Taiwan, uh, and then so so uh, to show him then he was able to undergo this surgery, brain surgery, <clears throat> uh, to remove tumors in de December that year. Now. Uh, there were complications afterwards. So a month later, he was kind of suffering from hydrocephalus, which is kind of like the there's too much fluid in the brain, so it's putting pressure on the brain, and so he had to undergo another surgery. Um, uh, so the the but the pressure on that on his brain and you know the nerves uh, kind of caused him to be uh, in in the. Translation of, in the book, it, it says, uh, you know, he's slant-eyed, but I, I think what it meant is that he became kind of some cross-eyed, uh, kind of like, uh, you know, someone with a lazy eye, okay? And, you know, his leg mus muscles kind of shrank, um, and he kind of couldn't support himself standing or sitting, okay? So he was always in pain, having, and really having tantrums. Um, and is, so, you know, because he, he's in a hospital, uh, and so they, it's very difficult for the staff, the hospital staff to try to take care of him. And they suggested, you know, that maybe the family should take care of him while he's there. Uh, and then they actually still had to restrain him, uh, you know, his hands so that he wouldn't like start pulling things and, and whatnot. Okay. Uh, so one evening his mother, uh, kind of hugged him very tightly and sang some lullabies. <clears throat> and only when she sang the song, uh, only mother is the best in the world. Did he stop uh, his tantrums? Okay. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Okay. So uh, there was a nurse who suggested that, you know, perhaps because the doctors couldn't seem to do much for him, that she seek some, you know, kind of as a spiritual uh, uh, help, right? Uh, that to seek to find a, an enlightening teacher. Okay, so, um, but well, well, actually, first, you know, she's the nurse suggested that you know she recite uh, the Amita Amitabha, right? Uh, Amitofo, okay, like ten thousand times to help her son. Now, the mother at that time was an atheist, okay, so uh, and so at that time she, but you know, <laughs> she'll do anything for her son, right? So, so she would do it. Um, now, her sister also went to a, a, a Buddhist temple to see this enlight you know this enlightened teacher okay so it was, it was uh basically the abbot at the, at the temple <clears throat> and uh she bought some holy water <laughs> and so basically you know so there was two choices a small bottle or a large bottle and it was like 500 for, uh nt uh, taiwan dollars for the small one and a thousand nt for the for the large bottle so she bought the small bottle and also a tape for where they chant um, on the on the tape, so you can just play it and the, there's the chanting. Um, now the abbot had told her that, well, you know, not being sincere, you know, you, you didn't, you know, burn incense regularly, 
uh, and yet you expect, you know, in the time of crisis to, to hold on to the Buddha's feet during, during this time, you know, to expect some help, right? So he's kind of, uh, saying that this is, you know, that's not how it works. Okay. So, but when she, the mother heard that, you know, she was kind of quite offended by that. But, <clears throat> okay. So, but anyway, she, she played the tape, the chanting, but actually her son, Zishong, he, he didn't really want to listen to it. Okay. So, so she stopped. Stop playing it, and she, in fact, she just threw it away uh, along with the holy water. Um, so she thought, now that that's probably not not going to help him. Okay. Okay. So then, um, basically, the mother's sister confided in, in one of a colleague, you know, also seeking this enlightened teacher, <clears throat> and so she, this her colleague uh, apparently had. Uh, is a Tao Kin, and so suggested that maybe, you know, if you go to this Tao temple, um, that they might be able to help. Uh, so, um, that's, okay, so then, so she did go there, uh, and, and then, you know, the, obviously, a lot of times, you know, when we come to the Tao temple, they uh, ask us, oh, you want to receive the Tao and all that. So they, they were trying to talk about <clears throat> kind of introduction to Tao, See if, you know, they would receive the Tao. Now she wasn't, the mother wasn't interested. She just went straight to the altar and she's like looking at, this happened to be a Guan, uh, Guan Gong General Guan, um, temple. Okay. I mean, that's the, the name of it. And they have a big statue of General Guan in there. And so she went up straight to the, uh, to the altar to look at the, the statue. Um, and I don't know. She, when she was standing there, she felt, you know, a sense of peace. While she was there, um, and then so, uh, th and afterwards, you know, the, uh, uh, basically the, the temple, the temple master, there gave um, gave her some holy water. Okay, so we also have holy water on the on the altar, right? And also an apple that was offered, uh, one of the fr uh, fruit offerings, uh, and you know, told her to take this back to give to her son. <clears throat> And, but, with the caveat that you have to be sincere. Okay, so, <clears throat> uh, said that, you know, having, if you have 70, uh, 30% sincerity, then heaven will support you with the other 70%. Um, and so the efficacy of that holy water really depends on her, her, uh, sincerity. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> all right. So, uh, and then so also, uh, you know, the temple asked, uh, host also asked uh, to, yeah, it'd be a good idea to also come back and receive the Tao in a, in a few days' time uh, when the transmitting master would be at the temple. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> okay. So, um, actually, okay. So, all right. Uh, when they did, yeah, sorry, go back to that. Uh, basically, she brought it back to the hospital and gave um, Zishong the holy water and the and the apple. Okay, you know, chopped up the apple and gave it to him. <clears throat> and you know, he he was able to take it and, and, and eat it. And then he could was able to be able to sit up in bed. Uh, before before he couldn't even support himself like that. So he, he you know he would just be lying down or someone had to kind of hold him up. Uh, but then so that kind of gave. Um, his mother is uh, some kind of, uh, it strengthened her. Well, I mean, I, I guess, I don't know. At that time, she didn't, she didn't really believe much, but, uh, you know, cause she was an atheist, but, uh, it kind of, um, I guess gave her some confidence that she believed that, yeah, this, this thing, this is real. This is, this actually works. So, so that she would be willing to go and receive the Tao. Okay. So, so the mother then received the Tao, uh, and on uh, the next, yeah, the next month in January 22nd. Oh, I guess that was then. Okay. So, um, and, <clears throat> but after she received the Tao, then Zishong's condition kind of worsened over, you know, the, the, the days afterwards. Um, and <clears throat> so, uh, and at that time, basically the doctor said, you know, it's kind of, uh, there's not much else that they can do for him. Uh, and so I said that you should, you know, told the mother that you should probably just, uh, you know, take, take him home, uh, and, 
you know, it's just for basically hospice care, you know, end of life care at, at home. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, so, so basically the mother did take him home. Uh, and, uh, on the way though, on the way, his, his the son, his lips started turning like purple. Uh, and the mother then used, okay, so mother had received the Tao. Okay. So, and then, so she remembered, knew the three treasures that she could use the three treasures. So in the car, she was using the three treasures. Uh, and then she's kind of smelled a strong scent of incense in the car. Uh, she was wondering, you know, where did that incense come from? Okay. And, and then she noticed that, uh, her son's lips then began to kind of return to normal, kind of a little bit reddish. Uh, so there, I mean, there's a, uh, I guess saying, I guess that, you know, when you have, you smell this incense, uh, it's indicates maybe the presence of like the Buddhas and saints. Okay. So, so using the three treasures then, uh, basically, you know, yeah, it's like a, you know, you can say it's like an SOS signal. Okay. So it's asking Buddhas for help. Okay. <clears throat> um, and then, so, uh, now then, uh, so three days late, uh, let's see. Yeah. Three days later, then basically the grandmother and also the son, uh, were brought to the temple to, to also to receive the Tao. Um, <clears throat> so after receiving the Tao, then the, the, they listen to the explanation of the three treasures. Um, and the son actually, you know, at first the mother wanted to hold the son, uh, but he, he refused. He wanted to sit by himself in a chair and he was able to sit, sit up by himself and he sat cross-legged. You know, it's kind of like the, a monk sitting there, uh, you know, meditating or whatever, but, uh, that, that's what he did. Um, okay. All right. Okay, so uh, afterwards, uh, because then they said, okay, so they're, they're, they were having a Dharma class. So this is uh, just a, uh, about like a week later. Um, and so, you know, the mother was very mm, interested, I guess, uh, um, and seeing that this kind of seems this path, what, what she was doing here was helping her son. So she was uh, definitely interested in pursuing it further. And so... So she went to attend this Dharma class along with her, you know, mother, the grandmother. Okay. Now, obviously she was doing it. She wanted to do it to help her son. Uh, that she saw this, this, this scrolls on the wall in the temple that, uh, is from the Diamond Sutra. It says, if through form one looks for me or the self, uh, or via the sound of voice beseeches me or the self, this person walks a corrupted path and is unable to see the Tathagata, okay, or the Buddha. So, Basically, you know, about looking for, looking for the truth, looking for the true self, it, it's not, it's not there, not in that ego, not in that, that's, that's what we see in these forms. Okay. So it's not, that's not the, the real, the truth is not there. Okay. So, but, but that, you know, she, she kind of felt bad because she, ashamed, I guess, of herself because she, uh, because that's kind of what she was focusing on, you know, all these forms that, uh, and that can try to help her son. Okay. Uh, now, during the, during the Dharma class, um, on the first day, uh, basically, Immortal Li, one of the eight immortals, um, actually tried to help, uh, Zishong, okay, uh, by applying pressure to his various pressure points. But, um, you know, he, and, and the mother asked him, you know, what, what was the cause of this? And he, he, he didn't know. Um, then on another, uh, and I guess it's the third day of the Dharma class. Um, immortal, uh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, sorry. Immortal Lee then, then told, uh, the mother to print, you know, these books, uh, you know, like the temple books and scriptures on behalf of her son. So, so we, we also say that because that's kind of a way to perform merits. You print books, um, and you can dedicate those merits to, to others. And, and we've done that, uh, many times too for, uh, you know, when people are sick or whatever, um, you can print books and, you know, dedicate merits to them. Okay. Um, all right. Now, uh, on that third day of the Dharma class, 
immortal, uh, sorry, not immortal, uh, uh, Jianghua Bodhisattva, okay, uh, channeled in. And uh, she kind of revealed that there was this past life, life karma between the child and, and the parents, okay. So basically the child, uh, Zixiong, in his past life, he was an abbot uh, at a temple. <clears throat> and uh, his parents were actually, uh, they were also married in that previous life, but uh, they, they happened to go to this, this temple where this abbot was, and they carelessly, they, they happened to uh, break something that was very precious to, to the abbot. Okay, so uh, uh, because of that, um, and, and, you know, they obviously, they, it's something that had really more sentimental value than, than that was really, uh, you know, had material value. But um, nevertheless, you know, they, they couldn't, obviously, they couldn't pay back, uh, you know, the damage. <laughs> and so, uh, so, but the abbot, you know, he, he came back basically in this life to kind of resolve this karma that happened there in that previous life. Uh, and also to ultimately to attain alignment because in the previous life he, as an abbot, as the uh, cultivator, uh, he was very close to, you know, he cultivated very well uh, and he was very close to achieving enlightenment. But because of that incident, uh, he failed. And so he, he needed to kind of complete this karma in this life. Uh, and so he was born as their son in this life. Okay. And also, <laughs> uh, you can say another purpose was to, is, you can say it's kind of that payback of the karma is that let them know what it was like to lose someone, something very precious to them. Okay. So, uh, and then Jawa Bodhisattva also told her that, you know, this is, he, he basically has accomplished his mission now, even though, you know, he's only like four years old, but he, he's accomplished his mission in this life. And he's ready to, to go home, to return, um, to, to go back to heaven. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, and then, uh, but, you know, the mother cried <laughs> and said, asked Jawa Bodhisattva say, to save her child. Right? She's w w unwilling to let her go, let him go. Uh, and so Jawa Bodhisattva asked, well, do you really want to take care of him like this for the rest of his life? Right? And, uh, Jawa Bodhisattva, you know, continued to say so, um, because he, in his, in his condition, he, he won't be able to assist in any, in the Tao, in the propagation of the Tao or anything, or maybe even cultivate, because he has some, he has brain damage. Okay, so, um, but that he's already established a good karma with his family, you know, in this life, uh, that the deities or, you know, the basically the Buddhas and saints have, they've already been helping him throughout this time. Um, but they cannot, see, even the Buddhas cannot, uh, change or alter one's karma. Okay. They cannot, like, just take it away. Um, that karma is something that we each have to, uh, deal with, uh, take care of ourselves. But we can do that with, with our merits and virtues. And, but, you know, our holy teacher can use those to negotiate, uh, down our karmic debts. Okay. Um, now, uh, the Bodhisattva also told her that, you know, she was also a cultivator in past life, but, you know, they, because they also made a mistake, they didn't kind of lead them away from that path, okay, of enlightenment. <coughs> um, now, and finally said, you know, even with their son is no longer he here, that they should continue to cultivate, okay. Um, okay, so despite um, yeah, so despite realizing that basically she would soon lose her son, uh, you know, the, the mother, you know, was, was very grateful, you know, for this, uh, opportunity to hear the, the merciful guidance from the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Uh, during, okay. All right. <clears throat> so, um, the basically, uh, Zizhong, he kind of improved afterwards. Uh, 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 yeah. Um, but, uh, because his, you know, basically his mission was complete because he also received a Tao, right? So when he received a Tao, I mean, he had cultivated, uh, you know, because remember in his previous lifetime, he was almost ready to achieve enlightenment. Um, but he just, you know, because of that, that incident, 
uh, he, he kind of messed up and had to reincarnate. <clears throat> and so, but in this life, because he received the Tao and he already had sufficient merits and his virtues um, were fine or enough so uh, that he can now leave this world and, and attain, you know, basically immortality, return to heaven. Okay, so... Um, but the mother, you know, she's she's not ready to to accept this fate, <laughs> and told him, you know, says you're 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 unfilial, right? You're not filial. Um, to to you know, it, it's very for a child to die before the parent is considered to be a very unfilial thing to happen. Okay, so because they're you know they're supposed to outlive the parents, right? And so you you know says better not die. You know, can't just leave without saying anything. Yeah, because he, you know, he at that at this point he was not saying anything. Um, uh, so, but okay, uh, but you know, the mother then called called the the, the father in, in New York and you know suggested maybe talk to the son. Uh, the father did talk to the son over the phone, um, and he told him that you know if he wants to go, wants to go, that yeah he can, um, but he has to wait a few more days. Uh, until he turns five years old. So right now he's, he's, remember he was born in February 13th. Okay. So, and this is just a few days before that. And so he, uh, the boy promised him that, yes, he'll, he'll wait until he's five. <laughs> okay. Before he leaves. Right. <clears throat> and, uh, so anyways, during this time, you know, this guy's, uh, basically, uh, he, he would kind of pass out every, every half hour and then they would try to revive him and all that. Uh, and all the time, you know, basically, the the mother is, you know, trying to keep him here, okay, not letting him go. Um, so, okay, and then, the, so the, but the mother then, you know, called, tried to call all the family members and relatives to come and see him one last time before he leaves. Um, okay, now he, he, okay, so uh, this, uh, this is kind of like some of the, I guess, family members here. <clears throat> this is the mother here. Uh, she actually lives here in New York. Uh, she's a lecturer now. Um, we've met her. Um, and this is the, the grandmother who is taking care of. Uh, this is the transmitting master. Okay. Uh, okay. So, oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, before I get too fast. All right. Um, now the, the boy actually, he's, his spirit can, he can leave his body or, or I don't know. Uh, and he actually went to New York to visit to see his, his, uh, father and brother, um, you know, spiritually, okay, <clears throat> and, but anyways, um, let's see, so, uh, and then one time he said that, oh, someone's there to pick it, you know, to pick him up, to, to take him away, and you know, the mother said, no, 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 don't, don't, don't follow any, let anyone take you away, okay, uh, and, I mean, but it, but it was his, uh, maternal grandmother who had already passed away, too, before, um, and so, um, but anyways, um, finally the, the grandmother who was taking care of him here, um, kind of was fed up with everyone or, and the mother, you know, trying to keep, you know, trying to keep, prevent, uh, or hold on to, uh, the, the Zhishong to prevent him from leaving. Um, because, you know, she, she said that, you know, basically, uh, there, I guess there's a saying that, um, you know, people, I mean, if we, if, if a person is, is trying to go and, and, you know, the family tries to keep them here, uh, they're going to end up suffering even more later. Okay. So, so basically when it's time to go, you know, we should let them go. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. And then, so, and his last words, so before he did pass away, um, uh, you know, so he, he did actually pass away here, uh, on just after midnight, uh, you know, on his fifth birthday. Okay. So, so he did, uh, turn five years old as he promised, uh, before leaving. Okay. So, and his last word to everyone there was, you know, everybody don't cry. Uh, you will, you all have to come to the temple and pray, right? To kneel down and pray, you must come and pray, and congratulations to everyone. So he's he's telling everyone that they have to go to the like like he went to the temple to to receive the Tao. Uh, he was telling them all to receive the Tao. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so the day after that he passed away, uh, his 
they, they, his body was cremated. Um, but, uh, you know, his body, <coughs> it was soft, okay? It, it might have been cold, but uh, it was still soft and supple. Uh, and there was kind of this a little uh, this scent of fragrance <laughs> about his, 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 his body, okay? Uh, and, you know, so in the Tao, we know that cultivators, uh, as Tao cultivators, when we pass away, that our body remains soft and supple, okay? It doesn't, the, the rigor mortis, it, we don't become real stiff, okay? So that's kind of a sign that you can say we left peacefully, and we left this world peacefully, and we know where we're going, we, we've gone back to heaven, okay? Uh, and then so on that day that it was cremated, um, 15 members of his family received the Tao, uh, on behalf of, you know, his request, right? Okay, so, and that's actually, you know, that was, you can say that, that was one of his missions is to, you know, try to uh, promote, you can say promote the Tao even as a four-year-old uh, to, to uh, encourage them to receive the Tao, right? Okay, so a um, hundred days afterwards, you know, they have this uh, uh, sand writing reunion um, and with with the spirit of, uh, the sun, okay. Um, so that was in May. Uh, basically, he revealed in more detail that, you know, he was this abbot at this uh, Long San cemetery, uh, monastery in Sichuan. Um, and that he basically, he, he kept uh, a precious, his, the precious ashes of his master, right, in an urn on the altar, okay. Uh, and this couple came in one day and kind of carelessly knocked it over and it fell and broke. Uh, and so he lost his uh, temper um, and <clears throat> basically, uh, you know, kind of it flew into a rage and, and, uh, uh, and kind of berated the, the couple. Um, and so, you know, basically that he violated precepts, right? You, you know, as a even for us today, we have we observe those same precepts, right? As part of the 10, you can say the 10 uh, goodwill uh or 10 wholesome deeds or whatever. Uh, it's so like four of them relate to speech. And so, uh, you know, and, and obviously, you know, anger is, 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 you know, one of the four, three poisons. So, uh, so as a monk, they, they have even more of these. And so, so he violated precepts of speech and he created this karma. Uh, so he, you know, even though he was kind of close because due to his cultivation, he was close to achieving enlightenment, but, you know, this kind of held him back. And he had to reincarnate. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, okay. So, um, basically, you know, the, the kind of takeaway from here is that, uh, regardless of whether we know our past life karma, and now, you know, the, you know, in this case, you know, they knew the, the, the what the karma was, um, but, uh, we don't really have to know what the karma is. I mean, we know, once we know the principle, we know that, you know, if things, bad things are happening to us, it's, you can say it's, we've done some bad things in the past, okay? So, um, the best response is to be grateful and also to repent, right? Because that would be the absolute response. The a relative response or a conditional response is one where we are reacting to, uh, how the conditions, okay, that, that are happening. What, um, but if we always face or deal with any kind of karma, whether it's good or bad, to with gratitude uh, and we a repentant heart, then <clears throat> that is the best way to overcome or to at least to resolve them. Okay, uh, and it's always um, okay. So, uh, and of course, we also have to perform merits and you know continue to cultivate our virtues. <clears throat> uh, make sure that we always cultivate good affinity. Okay, with people, with others. Um, so as not to create any bad karma um, with others, okay? Because <clears throat> once we uh, create any bad karma, then like like what happened in his previous life, uh, that's could result in us, you know, having to reincarnate again. Um, uh, the but the affinity in this world, we also have to realize that it's not forever, okay? <clears throat> so any kind of affinity that we establish in this world is will one day end. Um, whether it's at the end of our lives or even before that. Okay, so, uh, we have to learn to let it go when it, when it does end. Um, just, <clears throat> and, uh, otherwise, this attachment can cause another karma, which can then lead to 
further reincarnation. So, so yeah. So obviously, the death of a child is is uh, something. It's not easy for a parent to accept, um, but do have to let it go. Okay. Um, uh, and then you know, obviously, this applies to any kind of affinity um, that we have. Now, during our lives, and especially at the end of our lives, uh, we should not have any attachments or strong emotions. Um, okay, because this energy uh, or force will influence where we go in the next life. <clears throat> we don't want to be, uh, let's see, uh, yeah, okay, so we don't want to be kind of ready to, to leave this world and then suddenly, you know, we think of something or remember something, say, oh, such and such a person. <laughs> Uh, they owe me money, okay? Suddenly I remember that, ah, this person owes me. Uh, and, you know, we have to learn to kind of forgive and forget, okay? Uh, or that we remember that such and such person, you know, they betrayed me and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm angry, I want vengeance, okay? So, again, uh, we can't have those types of thoughts. We just, just let it go, let everything go. Uh, then we can go peacefully. Otherwise, we have these attachments. It just draws us back. It's a force that pulls us back into this world to, in this cycle of reincarnation. Okay. So we should be peaceful and calm when we leave. The same, right? So there's the same, right? We want to rest in peace, right? Uh, so uh, we can only rest in peace when we have let go of everything, all right, at the end. Um, now, the Tao is very precious. Okay. So not, uh, uh, not everything, not everyone is destined to receive the Tao in this life. Um, you know, it depends a lot on their karma and their affinity. Uh, but for those of us who are, you know, fortunate enough, I guess, to, um, to receive the Tao, uh, we must realize the preciousness of the Tao and cherish this opportunity, uh, for, uh, enlightenment. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, it's the difference. This is really the difference between life and death between, uh, you know, mortality and immortality. And we can achieve this in one lifetime, though. Okay, so we have this, we all have a personal mission, right, which is to cultivate and to transcend the cycle of birth, death, and rebirth. Um, and we have a further uh, collective mission, right, which is to guide those with who have that affinity to... Uh, 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 guide them with who, who have the affinity to to kind of receive the Tao and to uh, continue on the path of cultivation towards enlightenment. Okay, so uh, so the, I mean the takeaway here is is kind of similar to to what the, uh, the story you heard earlier, um, and so <coughs> uh, I guess that's it. Um, I thank uh, thank everyone uh, for listening, and I'm sorry we're kind of a little bit late. Uh, so if I had said anything wrong, I asked the Buddhas and saints for forgiveness and also the corrections from Transpaying Masters uh, lectures. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. We did talk to the, the mother of Duba Sintong in New York years ago when she came to the Happy Buddha Temple. So she also shared the story. It was a pretty touching story. and It's hard to let go. Uh, for family, but I think that was a good story for all of us to learn. And also the first story we heard about today, uh, about the little disciples. We don't want to complain by the time our time, by the time it's our time to go. So we need to cherish the moment to do what we have to do. And then the second story was regarding to the lecture soon. She passed away at 28 years old. It was too young to go. However, the big karma always behind us. So we need to work hard to gain our merits to, for our holy teacher to negotiate with big, big karma and credit with uh, for us. So thank you. Yeah, happy holiday, everybody. Yeah, thank you, transmitter. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so seize the moment. I mean, you know, <laughs> um, the, it, as we are here, we're you know, we listening to class. This is very good. That uh, and then, but we also have to uh, um, we have to cultivate ourselves. Ourselves, you know, self reflect every day. Uh, you know, we we're we're not perfect. We're not Buddhas yet, and so we will make mistakes, or you know, we might we might have the wrong attitude or whatever. All, all sorts of things that we uh, there are areas for improvement. Uh, and this is, it is never too soon <laughs> to, to make these improvements in ourselves. Uh, because again, 
just like Christine said, it, we don't we have no guarantees about tomorrow. Okay, so uh, let's do our best, and hopefully, uh, you know, the Buddhist uh, holy teacher says we we can in this one lifetime achieve that imp- immortality. Okay, it's just like the 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 boy here in the story. Um, he did it, and so can we.